Thank you, Madam Chairman. To all four of our witnesses today, thank you for the job you do, and more importantly, would you go back to the host of people that are behind you in this work and thank them on behalf of the committee. Uh, Dr. Walensky, I didn't have this on my list today, but the questions have precipitated it. Uh, do you really not know the answer to the number of vaccinated individuals at CDC, or did you just not want to answer Senator Cassidy's question? We're still actively working on collecting those data, and those data are updated um, in real time. Could you provide that for the committee by Monday of next week? Uh, I, we are working towards updating those data, and um, I would have to speak with my staff about where we are and, and whether those numbers are going to be available on Monday. Dr. Walensky, I just remind you that there's an executive order in place for all federal agencies that vaccinations for federal workers be concluded by November 22nd, and it says that actual date is November 8th, which is next Monday, because disciplinary actions have to begin on November the 9th. So if the collection is still in process, how are you going to start uh, disciplinary actions based upon the executive order? We're actively updating those data. I just don't know exactly when they will be um, fully in, but um, certainly we will have those data by the um, appropriate deadlines. Well, if CDC doesn't have to live by the rules, why should employers have to live by the mandate rules? As I mentioned, we will actively um, make sure that we are complying with the rules because okay, we want me, everybody else to as well. Let me ask one last question because I think what you've heard is a frustration by members about confusing messages that go out. It's confusion when somebody has to be vaccinated though they've got natural immunity. It's confusing when this policy is in place for masks, and then over here it's changed. And I realize this is an evolving thing. But correct me if I'm wrong. The CDC website currently says that if you have had COVID in the last 90 days and you leave the country and you come back in, you're not required to be tested before you come to the United States. The website says we recommend that within three to five days of returning to the United States, you should have a COVID test. I'll leave on Sunday. I have double vaccination. I have a booster. Next Thursday in London, I'll be required to have a COVID test in London before I can fly back into the United States. The CDC's own website puts more value on natural immunity than they do on two vaccine shots and a booster shot. Um our guidance is intended, for, first of all, let me just say, I think our guidance is very simple when it comes to vaccination. It has nothing to do with whether you've been infected or not. We recommend everybody in this country be vaccinated with either two doses of a Pfizer or Moderna vaccine or a single dose of a Johnson & Johnson vaccine. It couldn't be more simple. Everyone should get vaccinated who is eligible for, to be vaccinated. Um, with, regard to our, with regard to our travel, um, our travel uh, guidance and our travel restrictions are to keep Americans safe, to keep people traveling to the United States safe um, and to keep our local community safe. Let me repeat what the guidance is, that if I leave the country and I've been infected and recovered from COVID in the last 90 days, I can come back in the country without a requirement to be COVID tested before I come in the country, though I'm recommended once I get in the country to, be, to have a test within three to five days. If I'm vaccinated and I'm boosted, if I leave the country, I've got to physically be tested outside the United States before I can return to this country. I'm not asking a question. I'm making a point. Senator, that, is so confusing, that is so confusing that, there's, that you, there's every reason to believe that the American people can look at this and say, what in the hell are you guys doing? What are you judging this based on? It's not common sense, and it's certainly not science. The, the scientific ground for these tests is that these PCR tests can stay positive up to 12 weeks. And so what we're working to prevent is that people who would have a persistently positive test from prior infection not be confused with people who are newly infected in that country. They, have to, they actually have to prove that they've been a, had a positive test. So we're not looking um, and, and misdiagnosing them as newly infected. Well, it's the science that's informing that policy. Your, your, your stated policy suggests that you put more value on natural immunity, it does. Uh, it does. It's the performance of the diagnostic tests, unfortunately. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Thank you. That will end our hearing today, and I want to thank our panelists. Um, 
Uh, and I, Dr. Walensky, Dr. Fauci, Dr. Woodcock, and Assistant Secretary of